This is the juiciest pork chop you'll ever eat. Spoiler alert, it's not your typical pork chop. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, a home cook bringing you simply delicious food ideas. We are making pork chops today, but they're not really pork chops. They are pork shoulder steaks. And I'll tell you why I love them so much more than regular pork chops. I love the juiciness of pork shoulder steaks because of the marbling. It's also very inexpensive and it's more forgiving than pork chops, which is cut from the loin area of the pig. And I kind of liken uh, pork shoulder as kind of like the dark meat of pork. And I have about two pounds of it here, and it was less than $10. It was like $9.68 for both pieces, which is amazing. And we're going to pan sear these up, season it up, and it's going to be delicious. We're gonna make our dry rub with one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. You can always season it a little bit more after the fact. We'll start with that. Two teaspoons of paprika. Paprika will give it uh, a bit of smokiness, a color when you're searing it, and maybe some spiciness depending on your paprika and two teaspoons of garlic powder. We don't want to use uh, actual fresh garlic here because we don't want it to burn. That's it, super simple rub. We're going to liberally season both sides of each steak. And if you wanted to cut down some of the fat, you can totally do that as well. This was bone in, you can buy bone less um, pork shoulder steaks. Well, this one has a bone, this one did not. All right, getting my pan heated up on medium high. I'm using, I think my pan is like a 10 or maybe 12 inch pan. I'm not going to be able to fit both steaks on there. So I'm gonna to have to do them separately. Um, you don't want to overcrowd them in a pan because it can create steam and then you're not gonna get a really good sear on them. If you want, you can throw these on the grill. It will be fantastic and super tasty if you can do that. And once your pan is hot, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of oil. I'm using avocado oil, it has a high smoking temperature, and you want one that, um, that can give you that. Don't use olive oil. Olive oil will smoke really quickly. We're gonna put one of these steaks in there. And we're gonna let that sit for two minutes. Don't move it. In the meantime, I'm going to get my onion ready because we're going to serve it with an onion gravy. And I like to cut my onion actually from top to bottom. I'm just gonna take off the top and the bottom. And we're gonna slice it. Right, we're gonna flip it. Look at that, looks so good. We're gonna sear it for two minutes on the other side. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit. All right, I'm gonna cover it with a splatter screen. That's just so that it keeps my little cooking area a little bit cleaner. Okay, I'm going to flip it again and then let it cook for about five minutes. Remember there's a bone in this one, so it might take a little bit longer for the meat to cook around the bone. But we're gonna turn down the heat to a medium so that it doesn't like totally burn. All right, oh my goodness, it's already looking so good. We're gonna flip it over one more time and cook for another five minutes. That's one thing, another thing I love about pork shoulder is that it's super forgiving. Even if you maybe overcook it a little bit, it'll still be really juicy. All right, guys, 
I'm going to take this one off and get the other one going. Mm, there's a lot of juices in there, but also a lot of fat. Okay, we're going to bump up the heat because we want that to sear for a couple minutes before flipping over. You can tell that it's cooked through because of the clear juices that are coming out from the top. Before I tent it, I'm just going to add some freshly ground pepper. I didn't want to add the pepper initially when searing because I didn't want the pepper to burn. And we're just gonna lightly cover this while we wait for the other one. Okay, just turning off the heat while I get set up here. Looks good, guys. Oh my goodness. I wish you guys can smell it. It smells amazing. Okay, turning the heat back on to uh, medium low. And I'm going to add my onions right into all of the fat and the charring that's still in the pan. That's where all the flavor is. And we're going to saute the onions for about 10 minutes. And get some good caramelization going and flavors going and the onions will also help to deglaze the pan a little bit and we're going to make our gravy. And while the onions are cooking down, we've been kind of stirring occasionally. I'm going to get going on the gravy. I have one and a half cups of chicken broth. And I'm going to add a quarter cup of oyster sauce. Oyster sauce is really um, the main flavoring here. And then one tablespoon of soy sauce. Okay, once your onion are cooked down and caramelized. We're going to add our sauce to make the gravy. I'm going to scrape up the brown bits at the bottom too. Okay, just make sure that you run a wooden spoon kind of at the bottom to make sure you pick up all of the flavors that are on the pan. And we're going to thicken this to make it a gravy. And two tablespoons of cornstarch. Remember to add cool water to make it a slurry. That will help it to dissolve. Maybe one or two tablespoons of water. It won't dissolve in hot water. So make sure that your water is cool or cold. And while the sauce is simmering, because it's simmering quite a lot right now, make sure to keep it stirring while you add your slurry. Otherwise it will like thicken in one spot only. We don't want to do that. So right now I'm going to turn off my heat because I know that the pan holds a lot of heat. And now that it's thickened and glossy, this is going to go over our pork chops. And if you're serving it with rice or veg and or vegetables, you'll have a gravy to go on top of that as well. Oh, it looks so good. So all these juices accumulated while the pork was resting. So I'm going to pour it right into my sauce. That will just add a little bit more flavor. So we're going to stir in that extra, the extra juices. And we're also going to add about two teaspoons of sesame oil. All right, now the sauce is ready to go. All right, pouring the gravy over top. You 
you don't have to use all the gravy. Remember, if you're serving this with rice, you can serve it on the side as well. All right, I just have some green onions that I'm going to put on as garnish. And they're super curly today, which is so funny. Are you all ready for the taste? I'm um, dude, this is the taste. Sorry guys, I might've sounded a bit angry there, but it's more like from a place of hangriness. This is gonna be awesome. Doesn't it look awesome with the garnish? It's just ah, so appetizing. And the aroma is fantastic. I'm gonna cut off a little piece just for the taste. It's like, yeah, it's juicy. That marbling is makes for a much better mouthfeel. Easy to slice through. Mm. It's gonna be good. Tender. Got that rendering from the fat. And the gravy, nice accompaniment. The sauce doesn't overpower the, the pork chop and together, it's an awesome mouthfeel. Ah, oh, I gotta have another one. Look how easy that cuts through. Yes. Mmm, so good. You know, it's rice, moist veg. You got an awesome meal. Awesome, thanks dude. Mm -hmm. That was really simple to make, guys. You can save a boatload of money, have a delicious meal. For the recipe, check it out on my website, flowlum.com.